What's going on legend? This is Angus of Boss Fitness and super duper excited today to be sharing with you um, something really, really special which is an Alpha Female Mastery online coaching success story. And this one here is really special um, and I guess close to my heart simply because it's one of the most in-depth ones that I've ever sort of done. And it's simply because, well, the intensity and the depth of the change that has been achieved and I guess an overall transformation in this particular person, Louise, has just been so extravagant that it warrants the length that this video goes for. So um, basically this is a heads up, me and myself, Louise, we're going to be uncovering some epic insights into her journey in terms of where she was, the pain, the battles, the frustrations, the confusion, all that sort of stuff that she was experiencing. Um, where she is now in terms of the amazing progress that she's achieved both mentally in terms of her mental health, in terms of her, um, her gains that she's achieved, her strength, how her body looks and feels and operates, and kind of just the learnings and stuff in between. It's going to be so awesome and valuable for helping you in your own journey. So feel free to obviously, well, strap yourself in, put your feet up and get ready for some sick learnings that are going to help you in your journey. If you feel that you want to kind of fast forward or whatever at certain bits, by all means, go for gold. But understand, this is probably one of the best, most valuable um, success stories I've ever actually gone through with someone. Um, that's because, well, we, we haven't heard anything back. This is going to be absolutely epic for you. Um, get rid of distractions, play full out with this, and you're just going to absolutely love it. Louise is an absolute gem. She was, she was almost at the stage where she had written herself off as a lost cause. She's now someone who has lost just over 11 kgs over a nine month coaching period. And um, yeah, get ready to learn about how her life has absolutely changed and how the best is yet to come for her. Let's get stuck into the interview. And Louise, what's going on? Thanks so much for jumping on. How are you, my friend? I'm really good, thank you. That is awesome. You're looking so brown. That is because you've recently come back from making gains and crushing and having good times in Bali. Um, yes. So, how to you, you've come back when it's still spring in Australia, so everyone's obviously jealous of how brown and lean you are, I'm sure. Uh, it has been interesting, yes. It has been interesting with you, yes. So, um, yeah. thanks for jumping on the call. Obviously, what we're going to be rocking out with today is kind of, I guess, chatting about some of the mental, physical, and everything else gains that you've experienced through our nine months or so, so far of working together. So that way, whoever's checking this, um, you know, this video out, um, yeah, it can obviously be inspired, yes, by kind of like what you've achieved, but more so educated behind how it was done. So that way, um, well, it's really just to provide the value in that sense so they can kind of, I guess, have their hopes and dreams restored that it's possible for them. Because, well, for a while, you obviously probably thought that it wasn't possible for you, given some of your backstory. So speaking of backstory, why don't you share kind of, I guess, some of what you have been through before we were working together, kind of like some of the things you tried, um, your different experiences and stuff like that. So that way people that are watching don't just think, oh yeah, she was really lean and happy before she started. Like, let's make it kind of real, I guess, kind of where you were at before and what that was like. Cool. So um, I think like many out there, I've tried multiple different diets, um, you know, cleanses, shakes, juices, weight watches, frozen meals, like the list kind of continues to go on. Um, and probably the most recent one before working with you was a couple of years ago where I was working on a really strict, you know, six to eight meal a day, chicken, broccoli, every three hours, sparked the metabolism fire and, um, and you know, it was just a really clean eating, allegedly, you know, meal plan. Yeah, clean eating meal plan. Um, and, you know, to be fair, as you say, all diets get results and every single thing I've tried, I've absolutely had some amazing results. Um, but my problem was is that at the end of achieving results, the weight always piled back on and I had absolutely no idea how to, to maintain or to actually live a lifestyle where I could go on holiday and not freak out about eating the food or you know go hang out with my friends and not bring plastic containers of my meals while everyone else was eating theirs or or whatever it may be and um and i guess once i stopped eating on my six meal a day hashtag clean eating plan um the, the weight really piled back on i think i was the heaviest that i had ever been nearly hitting 90 kilos um, and I just really had absolutely no idea what I was meant to do. Like, what do I need to fuel my body with? How much do I need to put in here? And how do I make this a flexible lifestyle so that I can still have fun, look great, feel great, and still you know, have fun with my friends and travel and do other things that I love doing and not have my food kind of control that. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I guess in terms of, you know, the different types of, um, you know, eating and stuff I, I'd done before working with you and trialing or, you know, working with flexible dieting, they're kind of my background in that history. Um, and like specifically before I started working with you, um, I was in, I don't even know what we would call it. Uh, I was suffering from some really big mental health problems. Um, a couple years ago, I left my corporate career, you know, go on this amazing adventure, create my own life and, you know, kind of and, and live the entrepreneurial lifestyle, start my own business. And uh, when I broke free from that, not only did I leave my corporate job, I also came to see that the friendships and the relationships in my life were pretty horrific. And um, and obviously got out of a many toxic friendships that were really manipulative and narcissistic. And um, and I really just didn't know what to do. And you know, I, one, I was eating six to eight meals a day, and one of um, you know, I was working with the coach at the time, um, which was not healthy, and then kind of left that, and I was just left in this great big pit of, well, what am I meant to do now? And, you know, depression, anxiety, um, you know, there was paranoia, I couldn't sleep, uh, I, I just could not, I had such a lack of trust in my own ability to be able to move forward in my life. Um, coupled with a 20 kilo gain of weight and having no idea how to control that. Um, I guess I was just continuing to circle around in the state of who am I and I currently just loathe everything and the body that I live in. Um, and it was at that point where I looked at a photo of myself in December and was just like, this person does not deserve to have my eyes telling her that she's fat and you know needs to lose weight and all these other things um and that's where I guess I came to you and was like I, I need some help I'm really stuck and I, I need to go back to the gym and I can't go back there because I'm having anxiety attacks and I need some support to be able to do that um and you seem to be able to <laughs> eat like a normal person and still look great and I want that too <laughs> Um, so how do I do that? <laughs> and it was obviously, you know, when we had that conversation. Mm. So as we can see, you were in a, uh, a right, you know, hole, hamster wheel, all that sort of stuff of feels and confusion and, you know, just like the what the fuck type scenario, right? And what can happen for a lot of people is like, well, as you experience, like that's damaging, it's not fun. Um, it can be soul destroying, it can damage your self belief, it can cause depression, and all that sort of stuff, and you experience it to an extent. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, the longer that they're in that, that hole, that pit, those fields for, this is a massive contributor to what caused people to give up on themselves and quit the journey and then turn to whatever their kind of, well, what brings them pleasure is. So for a lot of us, it's food, and that's why people go further and further, further backwards and you know welcome to australia's obesity epidemic right so obviously well thankfully that didn't happen to you and thankfully you were willing to put well you know all that sort of fear and whatever that comes with that aside in favor of reaching out for help um i definitely remember the first time i ever had coaching it was the scariest fuck thing to do simply because well part of it means change change is scary and you know what i mean we are obviously creatures of familiarity comfort and stuff like that so we may say we want something, but then when it comes to putting in the work, it's like, oh no, hang on. That means actually, you know, creating some change and leaving my zone of familiarity. So, um, you know, obviously we had our chat at the very, very start of the year. Um, I can remember, um, you know, with yourself, how that came about was, well, I put you into, um, at the time, my recently set up female fat loss group, which is for free, obviously dropping value on people. And you're like, oh, I'm party sales funnel. I was like, nah, I'm just keen to help. <laughs> And, um, you know, I mean, I had no intention of really doing anything. It was just a means of, you know, you got value and that obviously opened your eyes to the fact that it could be done a different way, right? And I think what's one of the big things to be a testament to the success that you've had is how humble you've been in taking on that different way and allowing all of that to kind of reprogram and rewire how you view yourself, how you view food, how you review, how you kind of feel and your beliefs around exercise. And as a result of that, this is why you've been able to change, right? So let's kind of look, I guess, in terms of where you are now, and then afterwards we'll kind of uncover what you've sort of gone through or whatever. How are things now compared to, you know, I guess where you were at before? Share kind of, I guess, the biggest things that have changed for you and what you've noticed about yourself and, you know, you as a person now in terms of Lou now versus Lou back then. 
Um, well, for starters, I eat twice as much as what I used to. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Um, yeah, like I remember, you know, like sitting there working out what I used to eat in my past, you know, regime. And thinking that I was eating, you know, lots of food and working it out where I was, you know, eating around a thousand to twelve hundred calories a day. Where working with you, it was like, yeah, your body's starving. And, you know, my cycle, like, you know, what I'm taught is you need to eat less in order to be smaller, where it's like, well, actually, no, you need to fuel your body properly so that it can have the protein and the fiber and the nutrients so that it can actually function and you know, give you the results you're looking for along with your training and stuff. Mm. So I think that's probably one of the biggest things. Um, and I get asked all the time by people, like, how can you eat all this food? Like, you know, I'll go out and I'm like, I'm still hungry. <laughs> like, I need to eat more food. Or why are you ordering two meals? And it's like, because I, I have, you know, I've, I've got to hit my intake for the day and people just look shocked. <laughs> mm. um, so that's probably one of my most favorite things uh, about working with yourself and, and flexible dieting and, you know, this whole new way of living. Um, I no longer fear food, like, you know, there were good foods and there were bad foods. There's so many people and I was one of them out there who swore if I looked at cake or ice cream or donuts or anything, it simply made me gain five kilos simply by looking at it. Um, whereas now it's like, right, how do I eat all of this stuff and just know that it's a, it's a food it, mm. that my, like, the food actually isn't bad. It's my brain that's telling me that. So if I can change my way of thinking, which I have, um, I now love all food and know that I just need to eat it in moderation mm. and in a flexible manner. Um, what else? I guess, you know, as you mentioned at the start of this, I've just been away. I just spent a month traveling. Um, and you know, I probably drove every person I know nuts with the amount of food that I've posted over social. Oh. But I was having an absolute field day of, oh my God, I get to eat this every day and I still look better than when I left. Like I've come back without the massive weight gain that you get from mm. a holiday. Um, and that's a, that was kind of a bit of a fear. Like what if I go away and all this hard work goes you know, I'm not going to be able to weigh everything, um, but you know, by being consistent over the last nine months, I can look at food now and have a general idea of, cool, this would be about this amount for a portion size, and 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 I guess you know have control over how much I eat on a daily basis to still be able to get the results that I want and and stay looking lean and healthy. Mm. Um, probably one of like I guess the biggest things which I'm super stoked with is. You know where my life was with so many mental health challenges um, and gaining so much weight i had completely withdrawn from pretty much society and um you know and i found it really hard going out and catching up with people um because i just felt so uncomfortable as the person that i was um, and was judging myself so badly on my physical appearance so i just wouldn't go and see anyone and whereas now i guess you know i have the confidence back that i kind of formerly had um but on a whole different level um and not only is there like external confidence but the internal confidence and the amount of love that i have for who i am and the food that i put in my body and you know there's such a limited amount of self-loathing if any um mm. has probably been another really massive change between you know former me and current me um, and yeah, just being able to have fun in my life and not freak out about how many pieces of chicken I've eaten today. Mm, that's huge, isn't it? Yeah. And um, you know, last time I saw you, I came for a visit to Melbourne. Uh, for those tuning in, I know that Lou likes burgers just as much as I do. So we went out for a burger feed. You know, we had a lift together. It was great. So it's like I can see, you know, in real life how much this has changed relationship with food. And just, you know, obviously your self-love levels have just gone through the roof. And touching on what you shared before, so like one of the biggest things that contributes to people's like consistent stuffing up of diets and stuff like that is that while well, each one has its own level of rules, restrictions, um, must adhere to tight regulations, that sort of stuff. So that means that as soon as that routine is damaged or changed up or whatever through travel or social events and stuff like that, people consistently undo their progress. 
So naturally there's a fear around people when it goes to traveling because well, obviously your routine goes out of whack. You're gonna be eating all this nice food. You probably won't be going to the gym as often, rah, rah. So this is why a lot of people typically come back you know, between two and six kgs heavier, you know, when they actually go traveling. So, you know, not only did Lou come back browner, um, still so looking equally as lean, but obviously so happy because she's been able to experience what it's like to be able to well truly see flexible dieting at work in terms of the power and the control of choice that it gives you. And, you know, like obviously in terms of what was testament to that was her being able to still eat what she wanted to, but being okay with knowing that, well, you know, you're not going to sit there with a scale and weigh everything because the bulk of the time, the stuff that you're eating is stuff that's made by someone else. So, you know, she utilized me asking, you know, if she tracks something properly and, you know, I'll include some photos below of some of the stuff that she was eating. Awesome looking food um, and tracked it pretty much spot on how I would, which was learning that, well, you know, you can kind of go two ways at eating out. You can be the sort of person who just, you know, eats out and has a YOLO moment and goes, fuck it, I'll just start again tomorrow. Or you can actually plan to cater for it, which was what Lou did consistently. It means of oh, cool, you're like, what's, what, what is this? What roughly has it got in it? Let's see. So you can do a, a bit of pre-planning to an extent, but it's a means of, well, when you are eating, it's quite easy to be able to break down something in terms of its actual components. So that way, you know, pretty much almost spot on what it's actually got and then track it effectively without stuffing up progress. So a month of doing that, holy shit. And then more and more of doing this, it's only just going to set you up to be able to actually know how to intuitively eat, which a lot of people seem to think they know how to do just from eating healthy. So let's sort of touch on some more angles and some of the stuff that you've shared. So now we'll look at kind of like the learnings that have contributed to all the gains that you've achieved. So um, obviously physically you've changed massively. I think from memory, how many kgs have you shifted so far in terms of like overall fat loss? Uh, around 11 or 12. Mm, so fucking awesome that's like over a kg a month which is really really solid and for a lot of people we see shows like biggest loser and stuff like that where people are dropping one to three or four kgs a week and therefore we get dismayed if we're not losing that much a week like i remember with lou i said well you know if we lose 400 grams for a week on average it's a fucking win right so it's like understanding how fat loss works in relation to weight loss is huge because you realize oh wow all i'm losing is just fat and maintaining muscle so therefore this is why my body changes so well and obviously how you're looking as you are now whereas if people are dropping momentous amounts of weight consistently well yeah you're dropping weight but you lose control over what's actually been dropped which for a lot of people is muscle water small amount of fat and this is where the the dreaded skinny fat physique is built right so for you what i want to touch on here is like well one of the things you mentioned was that you had anxiety around exercise obviously now what you've experienced is well overcoming that and now loving weightlifting i know for a lot of people that are probably tuning in they could fear weightlifting or could be cardio bunnies right so why don't you share i guess some of your learnings around this area in terms of what's been valuable for you and how you feel that it's contributed to your growth in terms of getting stronger loving the gym loving exercise that sort of thing yeah so um i guess i have come from a mentality where in order to achieve goals or to progress it has to be like basically abusive you know like whether that's through a trainer screaming at you or whether that's through your own voice screaming at you um you know to kind of push yourself through pain essentially um and you know i guess i you know before we started working together that was one of the biggest reasons why i couldn't go back into a weight area you know i trained a little bit with weights before um or quite a bit but then um I guess, you know, it was through all of the, it was like a control. It was just like constant must go lift super heavy. Yeah, like, you know, really just go lift the shit out of everything until failure, like a, a gym bro, really. <laughs> and, um, and that was really holding me back. And that was a big reason why I was really challenged to go back in and deadlift and squat, which are exercises which I used to love. Um, because it was, my body was just like, no, it had associated so much pain to that and pressure that it was like, you're just not going to go there. Uh, and mentally, I just couldn't do it. And I would walk in there and like into the weight area of my gym and my brain would take over and it would shut down. It would be like, yeah, I don't think so, out you go. Um, and, you know, and my technique as well, also with playing a bit of a game, you know, I've had trainers in the past and what have you, um, but, you know, through working with yourself, we can obviously upload our technique into your group. Uh, and even though you're not physically there, it's like, cool, so can you watch this for me? And can you let me know what's going on? 
um, and you know, and I guess kind of really help shift all of that in a nice, calm, peaceful manner without that <laughs> kind of you know in my face. And um, and you know, and through the support from working with you, and obviously I spoke about that. You know, I was like, I just want to get back in there, and I just need some help. Uh, and you know, we're like, cool. So this is going to be our plan. Here are some technique videos. Go and watch those. Um, you know, the point of this is progression. It is simply to start wherever it is and progress your way through when you're ready. And I was really challenged by that. Like, I just wanted to go to failure every time. I think I still remember talking to you about, so why am I just not doing this to failure all the time? Because <laughs> um, I was so used to that concept. And instead it was like, cool, so we're just gonna go be nice to your body. And we're just gonna like start with some weight and it can tell you when it wants to increase instead of you telling it when you're gonna start increasing it. And I was like, okay, right. And I don't know how long it took for me to, that was one of the, the hardest challenges was to shift that mentality. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, through your guidance and to just be able to go in and just go, cool. So when you're ready, your body will tell you when you're ready to it become quite easy. And just put 1.25 kilos on each side of, say, you know, the squat bar or the the dip um, dip bar, dead lift bar, and you know, and then see how you go. And if that's still quite easy, cool. So next week, then put 2.5 on the side and just go up in tiny increments, and then stay there. And then when you're ready to go again, because it gets easier, then just go again. And um, and I guess you know that really just alleviated all of the stress and the pressure that I was putting on myself to go into an area which is male dominated. Like I think I'm generally the only girl that normally lifts, <laughs> and um, you know, and to just be okay with this is where I am and this is what my body wants me to be lifting. So therefore, just focus on you and what your body wants and don't worry about what everyone else is thinking because they're so focused on their shit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess it was started taking the stress off my poor brain and um, and started shifting it back into, you know, love. And, and that was really hard to, to turn it into that. Like, that was a real mind battle. Mm. I hope that answers that question. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So like, I truly believe, and you can probably notice this now, is that to win when it comes to, you know, being consistent with exercise, so training, um, you know, nutrition, all this sort of stuff, um, you know, it's just as much a mental game as it is physical. So it's like, you need to be really aware of your associations and perceptions around the work that you're doing, so that way it creates a healthy relationship with doing the work and not letting it turn into a pressure or anxiety or worry type scenario, because that will obviously affect consistency and set you up for failure, right? So one of the things you touched on, Lou, was like progression, right? And for a lot of people, progression is kind of like a word that they know, but they have no clue of with how to approach that in regard to the work that they're doing. And this is why it's the kind of like the scenario of, oh, I'm putting in work, but I don't know if it's right, and therefore winging it and hoping for the best in terms of trial and error, right? So, you know, in terms of with you, obviously, like how progression came about was, well, progression with an actual structure, right? So, you know, to provide some value to you listening, like, so one of the biggest things that I talk about when it comes to training is progressive overload. So load represents um, the amount of volume that you're lifting in terms of your weight. So weight multiplied by reps by sets, this equals a certain amount of volume. So what we've done with Lou is get her moving more volume of weight progressively from week to week. Certain exercises are going up quite gradually, other ones not so much, but regardless, they complement to the main lift so that she gets stronger and is able to move more weight effectively and then here and there fitness based stuff to be able to make sure that she's well fit and capable and not just strong and rigid and hating life so it's like it all contributes together to be able to contribute to fat loss because a lot of, a lot of people don't realize is that it's just as much a muscle maintenance game as it is well losing fat because if you don't give your body reason to keep a hold of muscle relevant to the activity you're doing well for a lot of people you unfortunately lose it so with Lou we haven't actually really done any isolated cardio, maybe here and there for finishes, I think from memory, but there haven't really been any, hey Louise, go and do this amount of cardio. Um, you know what I mean? It's just been getting strong as fuck, moving more weight and knowing that your only battle is I guess you versus your previous week's numbers. And you know, besting them where possible or if not just meeting them because 
it's just that's your only competition. So I think that's been testament to you as well, embracing that fully and then coming to enjoy the power of weightlifting over time because what you can probably acknowledge here, Lou, is that well, it sets you up to kind of realize, holy fuck, I'm kind of limitless in terms of, well, where I can take my body because as you get stronger and stuff like that, so does your body change. And if you know how to make flexible dieting work for you, it sets you up to control how you look, how you feel, how you function progressively as long as you give a shit about wanting to progress. So it's a pretty cool, pretty cool shindig, hey? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, like weightlifting, and I remember I said this to you once, maybe when you were here, like, like mentally, I could probably sit here for hours and talk about how bad I was in. Like I was the bottom of the barrel. I've got doctor's certificates, like God knows, book thick of, you know, where I was mentally at. And, um, and you know, and I guess working with you was kind of my last option across the board. Like it really was. It was like, I don't, I tried everything to get my way out of the fucking pit. And I, I didn't know, it was like, right. <laughs> Now we're going to focus it finally on changing your internal being and then we'll see whether you can get out of the hole. And the thing that I really love about weightlifting, and you said before, it is you against you. There was no other way, like the mental power that it has to go in there and be like, right, you know, can I just lift what I did last week if I'm not feeling great or fuck yeah, let's go for a PB and chuck another five kilos on here. I'm feeling awesome. And, you know, that then started transpiring throughout the rest of my life. It was like, oh, so instead of just focusing on the, God, let's just make it to this point today and we're doing a really good job if we just get out of bed and have a shower, it was like, right, let's raise the standard every day and go in and hustle for a PB if, of course, your body feels like it. And it start, And when I did, it was like, holy shit, like, I don't even know how I lifted that off the ground. I don't even know how that happened. And it just started to rewire my brain at the same time. And it was like, well, if I can do things in the gym that I didn't think were possible, then maybe I can actually do other things in my life that I didn't think were too possible too. Um, and started, I guess, gaining more confidence in other areas um, bit by bit. And, you know, progressively going out and seeing more people and making new friends. And, you know, and just, it, I guess it started to, you know, relay itself through everywhere and um and it, it has really been a big part you know focusing on my health and my strength uh, and you know the discipline and that to just you know bring me internal happiness because mm. i love challenging my brain and when you are not friends with it it's not always fun so so i, I really do think that that was a, a really big part as well mm. no, that's awesome 100 percent. and like i think I want to remember now. I remember recently you posted, I think this was just before you're about to leave Bali, wearing like a, a cool black bathing suit, um, sipping away at some coconut water, and you, know, you kind of shared some really cool stuff around self love and around how, um, you know, like I wasn't always perfect beforehand, you know, you didn't have XYZ, rah, rah. like a lot of people wait until perfect moments to try and get serious about themselves, sort of feel worthy to kind of take themselves seriously, that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously as a result of you while putting those excuses and fears aside and taking ownership and um, you know obviously some of the stuff you said before you're at a level now where your self-love is insane so why don't you I guess share I guess how you feel about yourself now not only physically but mentally in terms of just the different things that you've noticed let's sort of touch on that aspect of things because yeah, some of the stuff you shared in that, in that post itself was absolutely awesome like it's a lot of stuff that people will think it's never possible for them or that they'll feel jealous of are kind of just like wow that's insane like share i guess how you're kind of feeling within your own skin now um gosh i guess it's overwhelming like i never i don't think you know no one ever imagines that they'll get up every single day and look at themselves in the mirror and be like fuck i'm like the best person i could ever be and i am so happy with all of this and um you know like sometimes I, I've got big mirrors in my room for people who obviously don't know and it's like I walk past them sometimes and I'm shocked at the person that I see I'm like is that actually who I am and um and you know and we're not perfect and you know I put that post up and I actually was like oh 
I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it where I have more of a tan body and people can't see that I still have fat on my thighs or on my ass or whatever. And whenever I say to myself, I'll do it tomorrow, and I'm like, no, you go and do that right now. Like, no, you're not going to wait for more perfection. You'll do it now. And, um, yeah, I guess, you know, to to just value, well, for me, who I value who I am and to know that I have my back at whatever cost because I simply fuel my body with food that I love and I train and I live a healthy, active lifestyle and I surround myself with like-minded people that do that, you know, it just has catapulted my life into an existence that I probably never thought would exist. Um, you know, like, I guess, you know, January was when my mental health hit an all-time low and it's the only time I've ever walked into my doctor and bawled my eyes out and had her say to me, you have to start thinking about taking... Um, what did, what did she want? Serotonin or something, whatever she wants, some antidepressant. And um, she's like, we've got to get this dopamine and serotonin in your brain firing for you to, to find, to connect to happiness. <laughs> and I remember I walked out and I messaged you, I'm like, what's serotonin and where do I get this from? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, if I don't get any, they're going to give me some drugs and that's not an option because I have to be able to find happiness and life without fueling it with a drug to give it to me. And to sit here now, what are we? We're nine, 10 months down the track and just be like, I don't even know who that person is that was stuck in the pit is. Am I gonna actually progress from wanting to end my life to living a life I love? Like I, I didn't believe that that was possible. And, and I literally lived that life. And um, yeah, like it's it's crazy to, to have that and to um yeah like I, I actually don't remember the last time I said a bad thing to myself like my inner state is so calm and so peaceful like I caught up with one of my clients today and she's like how are you and I'm like everything is just so calm it's like I live in euphoria land and mm -hmm. it's so interesting I I've never experienced this before. I'm normally battling the good and the bad between the left and the right side of my brain and reframing everything for myself into happy, happy joy. Mm. And I was just like, I just have connected with this beautiful person in myself that I knew myself to be. I just didn't know how to find her. And, um, and you know, life is hard. We all know that. And, you know, we already have enough challenges. We don't need to challenge ourselves on the journey at the same time. And, um, and uh, yeah, I guess I just feel honored that I wake up every day and just be like, you know, how fucking good is this? Like, I feel great. I look great. I've got, yeah, like, I, I, I can't describe it to people <laughs> other than yeah, that. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. The, um, the big thing you touched on there was, like, you can't, to an extent, associate with how it was back then because it's like, oh, now, you, now you're kind of thinking about memory or whatever, what, what it was like, but it's like, what we're kind of going on here is like you've been able to create what's called an identity shift, right? So enough time in the trenches of taking on board education, utilizing it in terms of content, seeing how it's applicable to your life, putting in the work, building habits, building discipline, that sort of stuff. And you've created what's called, well, to an extent, um, unconscious competence. So it's like a lot of this you can kind of do without necessarily feeling, I mean, so thinking about it, right? And for those of you who are Pokemon fans, right, it's as if, well, for a lot of us, we start out as base level Pokemon. Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, whatever, right? All of us has got potential to be able to become a Charizard, a Blastoise, a Venusaur, right? And then even once you get there, it's just like, oh, wow, you realize you can become a Mega. And it's like, it's just cool because it's like, we've all got this potential. A lot of us put in the work, but we don't do the right stuff to allow us to gain experience to evolve. So all I've kind of done with working with Louise is it's just like being real right from the start that it's like, well, I can't really get your results here. You're doing it yourself. All I'm doing is just guiding you so you learn how to make better choices and actions. And I think, well, because that was something that was quite transparent. And then obviously she could relate to the content that I was putting out and jealous that I was looking how I was eating the food that I was. That created the environment for her to be willing enough to put her ego, fear, uncertainty, all that sort of stuff aside and taking on board a fresh way to look at things to evolve and as a result has become a completely new person over time. 
what's exciting, this is something I was chatting to Louise about before with her coming back from Bali, is that, well, we're now at a place where we can discontinue eating in a calorie deficit, which is obviously what's required to create fat loss. You need to consume less calories than what your body requires to maintain rather than to exercise so that you can give your body a reason to um, let go of fat in any capacity. So she's obviously nailed that. We've had fairly close to streamlined progress all the way along, hence her achieving her amount of fat loss that we've said. And she said, you know, like, I'm fucking happy with, you know, how, um, you know, how much I've achieved in fat loss. How can we keep moving forward? So now what's exciting is that we're going to be able to help her still to get a bit leaner, um, but not through eating in a calorie deficit, eating a shitload more, having more fun around her training and giving her back more and more flexibility as she eats more and more while getting leaner and stronger still, which is such an exciting scenario because for a lot of people, they put in the work with eating, you know, into a diet or smashing like a Maxine shred or whatever the fuck it is going around like you can get results from this sort of stuff as the weed as the weed said but it's quite difficult to maintain continuing to going with that afterwards because well it's not enjoyable and this is where people typically rebound and gain all that weight back and kind of feel loss and are even more kind of fucked than what they were when they started so what's exciting here is that well you know there's still more and more growth that awaits and it's not something that's going to involve more restriction to achieve, but rather eating more and more progression and more development with learnings to serve you moving forward. And what a lot of people fear, you know, especially as women, is you know, um, lifting heavy, uh, you know, getting bulky. Um, you know, like what happens if I eat carbs after this amount of time? Uh, what happens if I'm actually not eating? You know, fairly regularly throughout the day, is it going to fuck my metabolism? All this dumb fucking shit that saps the joy out of the game. We kind of took all that away for Louise and replaced it with, here you go, Louise, hit these targets for me. Eat what you want when you want to. I'll give you some tips along the way. And now she's at the stage where she's eating ice cream regularly, um, obviously eating out regularly, eat, eating fucking cool salads, loves salmon, all this sort of shit. So she eats obviously enough nutrient dense stuff to keep herself healthy. So don't think this is something where you can just, you know, eat macas all day every day and expect to get lean. Like sure you can do that, but you're not gonna feel good. And as Louise has obviously accomplished, it's about balance between nutrient rich foods, YOLO foods, whatever, and respecting all food, knowing that well for you to truly be hashtag healthy, it's about knowing how to make all food work for you. So I think you can relate to that in terms of well your enjoyment is now just climbing because well knowing how to respect and make more food work for you as opposed to what a lot of people do when they're in a realm of restriction is you can't even keep fucking chocolate in the house or some Nutella or anything like that because you just want to go and eat the whole fucking thing um, when you're in an emotional state which is usually what happens and you know um, that's obviously not the case for you anymore now is it yeah miss I love food over here is just the food foodie queen who posts better food photos than what I do um, you know, in terms of her social media, it's crazy, hey? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a competition. It's a competition, exactly. Yeah, so, I really um, wake up and go, right, how can I post the best food today out of everyone? <laughs> that's it. And it's good to see because it's like ultimately for a lot of us, we love food and it's something that brings us that dopamine, that pleasure, and we enjoy it. But then for so many of us, our relationship with it isn't quality. And therefore that's kind of like, well, we get to a stage where we kind of think that it's like, do I want my dream body? Or do I just want to enjoy food? And you see what I mean? Like, but this is the scenario of kind of like, well, like the old El Paso ads, like, whereas the chick, it's like, nah, 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 nah. and it's like, why can't we have both? That's what you've been able to achieve here. Learning how to eat all the foods and enjoying, you know, fucking what you're eating, but then still building an awesome, lean, strong body. Yeah. So um, these learnings have been sick and hopefully you've taken value from it so far. Those of you who are watching, why don't we touch on Louise now in terms of like, um, I guess what you've valued most from actually being coached properly rather than me just telling you what to do when you're getting on with it as if you were just downloaded some fucking basic meal plan or whatever online. Like, what do you think you've appreciated most or valued most from coaching so far? Um, I think well, for starters, like the support that sits with coaching, um, mm -hmm. you know, like I was obviously not in a great place and it really wasn't until you know, I had been, I, I don't think I'd acknowledged quite how bad I was mentally, emotionally, and then, you know, decided in December, right, I've got to focus on my health. I can't keep telling myself I'm fat when I look at pictures and living an unhealthy, unhappy lifestyle. 
Mm. And then, you know, reaching out to you and then, you know, when shit hit the fan in Jan, which we'd been working together before then, I, I didn't know where else to go. And I don't know people that knew what serotonin and dopamine was. And if I was of a logical mind, of course I know what they are. But I was in this state of shock, like, oh my God, what's just happening to me? And, you know, to be able to reach out to you and be like, cool, so what, what are these things? Like, you know, do I get some vitamins? Do I get some minerals? Like, what do I need to do? And, you, and I'm pretty sure you're like, cool. And then we start talking about hot cross buns. And I was like, yeah, I haven't eaten them for years, but if I was going to, and I would have chocolate in them. And you were like, cool, so you're going to go get some hot cross buns with chocolate in them. And I was like, don't be fucking ridiculous. Like, no, I can't do that. That's a bad food. And I did it and it was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I still have Easter eggs from Easter because I just got so much because it brought me yeah, so much happiness. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, you know, and your expertise in that space, knowing that food brings people joy and not restriction and, you know, to have the support and the backup of someone saying that to you and permission to go and eat what you want at the start, it's like, oh. And I don't know other coaches in that, like in the health space, that actually give you permission to go and eat what you want within reason, you know, an 80 20 rule, and, um, and then don't tell you that you're bad and that it was a test, or mm -hmm. go and eat salad or intermittent fast for 48 hours or whatever it is. And, um, you know, that, that was like, that still is absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, and I know that, you know, more recently or when you were over in Melbourne, I wasn't in a great place. And you was like, so for me to help you, I need you to explain to me what it's like so that I can help you go train five days instead of four, which you're currently doing. And, you know, like, I guess to have someone who is coaching you to act that you actually trust to be able to explain, you know, right, this is what's happening and this is what's triggering me to then trust, yeah, cool, just like, let's just go do that and it will work, um, as opposed to fumbling my way around in the dark, trying to find the answers all by myself and on Google or just not doing anything. Um, you know, like it, you know, these are all things that kind of changed my life and it completely changed my mindset. Um, and, you know, and broke so many weird things that were going on. Um, and, you know, like we have an awesome group, which have got other, you know, fantastic women in there who have all got different, uh, you know, goals, different backgrounds, you know, supporting each other and connecting and sharing like really, you know, intimate things about their lives and what's got them into a challenge and how they're working through, you know, X, Y or Z. And this is a part of the reason why they're training. Like it's pretty cool to be on a journey with people at the same time instead of, you know, feeling like you're all alone um, and having that emotional connection, yeah. um, you know, and I've loved that. Like I, like obviously I contribute a lot in there and it's just one of my favorite things. Um, and, you know, the knowledge, the expertise, we post our training videos in there, like, cool, can you check this out? Um, and I don't have to go and pay a personal trainer and add more money into my, you know, my health fund um, because, I trust your expertise. We're like, cool. So, you know, breathing, remember you have to breathe. Like that's <laughs> something you've got to do. Um, you know, and to know that as we progress and lift heavier, um, it's like, cool. So I'm going to stay here. I'm going to film this. Can you watch it? Yep, you're good. Okay, well now I have the confidence that I can continue progressing because I'm doing this right and I'm not going to hurt myself along the way, um, which is also huge. Um, but, you know, it's not super controlling either, and I also love that. Um, you know, I've been a part of or worked with other coaches in the past where it's been so my way, so controlling, so you must go do this, whereas, you know, if we're going to fuck up, you let us go do that and then go, well, what did you learn from that experience? Right, now let's just get back on and reset and off you go and don't shit on yourself. There's no point hating yourself for it. Like, just love it and move on. And, um, and, you know, that's powerful stuff to work with someone like that. Um, you know, and I say to you all the time, you know, the integrity that you have. You know, I, I work in the coaching industry. You are a coach. Like every industry, there are sometimes some out there talking one thing and doing others and, you know, working with you that you literally, like, walk your talk. Like, it's, 
you know, I, I just feel so grateful that that came into my world um, because, you know, when you believe you can have a lifestyle or a relationship with food and have a healthy body or a lean body to match it and, you know, you're kind of living in dreamland just up and hoping like hell that this can exist and you invest in a, a dream with the fairies and the unicorns and you've really got no idea whether the person you're going to follow is actually going to be the real deal or all of a sudden you're going to get all these other magical things kind of pop out once you've invested um you know to work with a coach like yourself where it's like cool this is what i love this is what i coach people in this is what i can help you get towards if you do the work and you are actually legitimately at the other end of that rainbow like you know i i think i say all the time i feel like i've been given superpowers and you know and like how did I get so lucky and you know it really is like the support and the knowledge and the guidance and the community like it, it's just amazing so um yeah that's really That's cool. about that. Mm. <laughs> so we can see there that uh yeah, you've all truly made some gains as the saying goes um and like for a lot of people, I know that even when I had my first coaching experience, one of the biggest things I was scared of was, oh, what happens if it doesn't work? What happens if it becomes another waste of money, rah, rah, rah. And like, um, you know, for a lot of people, even when they uh, join, it's not easy to take on board paying for coaching. Like it's an investment, it's an investment to yourself. It's a financial stretch to raise your standards of commitment to become the best version of you. And like I remember for Louise, it wasn't easy right away for her to pay me what I charge per week. But then the first thing I did was like, right, tell me all the things you do in terms of your lifestyle and where your money goes to, and I'll help you to pay for coaching easier. Let's see what we can get rid of that's not serving you. And I found out <laughs> that she was pumping a shitload of dollars into supplements, and I was like, sweet. If we get rid of that, you'll be able to pretty much pay for my coaching a month right there. And she was like, oh, but what about this, this, and this? And I was like, no, nah, you can get all of that in food. And that's what I mean. And uh, now she's using very minimal, slash I think a whey protein here and there. She asked me the other day, she was like, oh, Angus, um, I found this one and it's apparently a, a, a slimming fat loss protein. Um, can you tell me like how that works? And I was like, yeah, see this and this, that's apparently what's you know going to make you slim, except it's not proven in any way to do that. It's just a marketing thing and that's how companies like that make money. So it's like we used to save so much money through just learning how to do the right shit. That's the most important and then not place money or time into the stuff that's irrelevant slash super small. And because I've focused on educating her throughout the way entirely, this is why she's now so sound and confident in herself and in her knowledge. So she doesn't suffer with the anxiety of what it's like to go on the journey solo, where you see shit on social media, online, in bookstores, fucking everywhere, where everything contradicts. And the more that you kind of go down that hole, the less that you know and the less you back yourself. Um, so, see what I mean? So, <laughs> it's just it's just funny to think because like, like it doesn't seem like it was that long ago but i remember it was just like sweet okay it's a stretch awesome to see how we can accommodate it better let's get rid of this this and this and then bazinga but i think the reason why you've been so accommodating of that is because well you legitimately give a shit about your goals and you're willing to learn how a lot of people don't legitimately desire the change they're just interested in the idea of change and they actually value their comfort zone even more than becoming this new version of themselves and because they know it's going to require some you know some growth and pushing through some fear it's like oh no i'm actually going to stay in my comfort zone and i'll feel validated about the fact that i've just talked about my my goals my parent goals and whatever you've actually been a go-getter even though you've still had curveballs and stuff along the way so kudos to you so i guess my last question for you louise is kind of like well for anyone that's like tuned into this video whether it's been in a blog or online or whatever who's been inspired by your story, but may still be cautious of coaching, whether it's a good fit for them or, you know, whether they think it's just like whatever fear they may have, why don't you share, I guess, why it would be one of the best decisions they could make working with myself or even a coach in general, if they're kind of tossing up, whether it would be a good fit for them or something worthy of, I mean, so worth doing. Um, I just honestly don't believe, no, I honestly believe that in order to get the results you know that we want we can't do it by ourselves and you know and we put value on money and we put value on our time but more often than not we put more value on money than we do on time yeah. and you know like so to invest in you because that's all you're doing you're not really investing in anyone external you're just giving you know value to yourself to actually make the commit like to make the goals happen and, um, you know, and as you said before, you know, we love our comfort zone. We are creatures of the comfort zone. 
And in order to get out of our comfort zone, if we could do that by ourselves, we would already do it. Like, you know, we'd be out there doing it every day. Whereas when we invest in a coach and in someone like you, it's like, cool, so, you know, I know that I need to do X, Y, and Z, but I can't do it by myself. So I just need your accountability here. Not that I've ever met Coach Angus, which I've heard is a very different person, you know, to go and do it, you know, it's what motivates us by having that person there to go, cool, so why aren't you working towards the goals that you told me that you wanted? And, you know, and investing in a coach like you, it, it made sure that I sure as hell got out of bed and went to the gym in the middle of winter when I didn't want to, or stuck to my calories and, you know, and hit my protein goals and what have you, because otherwise I was going to get, you know, cool. So remember why you started this? And that's a really big motivator for most people is their reason why. And if they don't know it yet, then people like you will drag that out of them. Um, Cause I know that that's one of the most favorite things that you love talking about is the why and the mindset behind it. And, um, you know, and I guess working, you know, with you specifically, um, you know, you live, eat, breathe this game stuff. You know, it's your world, your knowledge. You've just invested more money to learn more about, you know, nutrition to be able to, you know, learn yourself, how to self, how to clients, etc. Um, and you know, the fact that you just put so much time and energy in your own training, in your own health, and all your clients and ongoing learning. You know, I, I just wholeheartedly believe that any investment, you know, for someone to say, "Can you help me change your life?" Oh, can you help me change my life and invest that in someone like yourself? Like, it's just life-changing. And yeah, okay, it's scary. Like, I've worked with people in the past that have ended up terribly. It's one of the reasons why I got into the whole, the gigantic hole in the first place was through choosing to work with wrong coaches and wrong mentors um, and following the wrong people. And, you know, when you get to meet a coach like yourself and just trust, and be like, right, here, I'm going to invest in me by working with you and I trust that I've made the right choice here. Um, and to have, you know, and I said it before, all of your, you know, your knowledge and your authenticity and integrity backing that, I think I should be paying you five times the amount to be able, like, to be this version of me, money doesn't, you know, I can't pay millions for this. So, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, that's hopefully answered your question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, you really just have to ask yourself how much of a priority are these goals and why do I need to make them happen? Um, and, you know, for so many women, it's for their families or future family or, you know, to be a role model for other people in their life or whatever it may be. It's like, well, if you want to be that person and you can't do it by yourself, then why are you not investing in yourself? And why would you not invest in a world-class coach who just constantly invests in himself to ensure that he can get his clients the best results possible? Like, to me, it's just a no-brainer. And um, and that's why I chose to invest with you. Like, you know, I very much came from, I'm never working with coaches ever again. I told you that, like, <laughs> at the start, I'm like, I'm not working with a coach in any area of my life. And I feel like I've got my brain back and everything's amazing, but, I can't believe now I'm going to go and work with you <laughs> because my result, the, getting the results just meant that much to me. And um, and I guess, honestly, I just don't, I've never met anyone that's achieved their big, audacious dream goals that they never thought were imaginable without working with a coach to get them there. Yeah. So You probably agree that it's like the biggest asset to it when you find someone that you can trust and that walks their talk, etc is that you're, yeah. you're paying to get to that level that you want to without making the same mistakes that that person made to get there. Um, so it's like, well, I guess that's the biggest pro to it is that it's time travel, right? You're sustainably getting to point B far quicker than as if you were trying to continue to work it out yourself, trialing and erroring. Oh, let's see how this thing goes. Let's see how this goes. Oh, old mate online said this, I'll try this. Like there's, there's no reason why someone should eventually be able to get there going on solo. And I guess the biggest pro is that you can do literally whatever you want. You can take some breaks whenever you want to, rah, rah. But the con is that you're going to have to get it all the way yourself. And it's just a yeah. matter of time. Like every second that goes by with dying and you're getting closer to your deathbed. Like it's just, uh, it's just how it is. But like obviously with achieving goals like this, you're adding extra seconds to that clock 
and saving saving seconds that could have been wasted on trying to figure it out solo. So kudos to Louise. And spending all. money too. Like I look at all the money I've invested in like shakes and supplements and all the fucking things that we go along and invest in because of some magical miracle cure. Mm. And it's like thousands, I would hate to add it up. Hopefully the day that I die, someone doesn't deliver it to me and go, here you go, here's much money you've wasted on all of this crap. Mm. You know, it's the time, the money and everything. And you know, like I still go and see, um, you know, my doctor and psychologist and whatever as part of, you know, my own kind of mental health care plan. And, you know, I've been on this journey of rediscovering myself and creating a healthy lifestyle, um, you know, for a few years. And I was talking to one of them the other day and, um, and he was just like, every time I see you, which is probably, or talk to you every two months, you're like a completely different version of yourself. Like, what have, what have you been doing this year that has like completely changed who you are? And I was like, oh, I have this health coach and I eat like really good food. And he's like, I don't get it. And I'm like, no, I've literally invested in a health coach. Like, you know, I've got lots of different health professionals that contribute, but I have a health coach. I invested in him and he just taught me how to, you know, eat food that I love and, you know, and train and, you know, and I do all this mindset stuff and whatever. And, um, and here I am. And he's just like, well, you just gotta stay on that, like <laughs> you doing it. stay there, and you know, and like, how cool is that? Mm. That you know, like, simply by saying to myself, this could go really pear shaped, and you could have made a really bad decision because I, when I started working with you, I'd only just put myself back into a like a living arrangement, like I was homeless before that, living you know everywhere, and um, you know, and I didn't have the money to invest, but it was like, well go back to that now, I'm so fucking happy that I didn't question it for a second and I just went, right, let's do this because it has recreated everything and um, yeah, save time, money, pain, everything. Like probably, I said it before, my, my life, I was miserable. Like I, I just, I didn't know how to do anything. Mm. And now we are a Charizard looking to go even further. It's going <laughs> to enjoy, it's going to require more joy, more games, and more good times. But it's been well and truly awesome, I guess, uncovering your story, Lou. Thanks so much for being vulnerable. And I guess I'm unpacking what you've gone through and just, you know, um, yeah, it's just been really, really cool. So um, thanks so much for your time, my friend. And um, have an awesome rest of your day. Bye. Fucking boom. How amazing was that? Really hope you enjoyed, um, I guess, going on that journey with myself and Louise as we uncovered exactly that, her journey. And as you would have heard, like, Louise wrote herself off as a lost cause, someone who maybe was doomed to stay overweight for the rest of her life because she had been to doctors, she had been to psychologists, she had utilized supplements, she had done fucking all the diets and was still stuck. And the disbelief and the, you know, sabotaging, um, you know, habits and all that sort of stuff that come with it, um, Louise just wasn't in a good place. But as you've seen, she's in an amazing place now, pretty much an entirely different person and now has such an amazing new, fresh and revamped zest for life. And of course, as we mentioned, well, the same can happen for you as well. It's just a means of are you prepared to learning the how and having someone come in to share the journey with you to be able to help you to make better choices and actions to change your whole reality because, well, your choices and actions were what got you here. And learning how to make better choices and actions over time are what's going to bridge this gap between where you are and where you want to be. So I guess with myself and Louise, well, how I was so certain that I could help her was because we had a dream body breakthrough call together, one-to-one -one, over the phone, and um, I just connected into where she was and decided whether I felt that I could actually meet her needs or not. And I'm the sort of person who, if I don't feel that I can help someone, I will let them know exactly why it's the case and try and refer them and point them in the right direction to be able to ensure they can get their needs met and still provide some value for them. Now, if I feel that with you having a call with me, if I feel that I can personally help you, I'll share with you exactly how I think that's the case and give you options in terms of what that could look like and how long for and stuff like that and kind of, well, no bullshit, basically. But if I feel that I can't, well, you see what I mean? Like, this is all just about helping you be able to move forward. And let's be real here. Well, you don't just need more information in terms of being able to solve your problems. It's about, well, learning exactly that, how to solve your problems and have someone who's walked a mile in your shoes before help you to get all the way without making the silly mistakes that you're already doing to be able to get the rest of the way. So all I want is success for you. I want you to be able to enjoy food to the next level. I want you to be able to build your dream body just like Louise. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and um, please make sure that you 
you like and comment below or just drop any questions or anything like that if you're unsure as to what Louise did to be able to get here um, in terms of where she is now. If you want to connect with her, you know, like more, by more than happy, I'm sure she'd agree that she'd love to connect with you as well and I can give you her social links and stuff like that. But um, yeah, thanks so much for watching and please, if you're open to the prospects of coaching, you feel that it could potentially work for you and you like what I'm about and my methods and what I've been through, please get in touch and let's have a chat and um, yeah, be blessed and uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.